everybody. Thanks for joining me for another one man review. I'm going to jump in and join the chorus of reviews that I'm sure are jumping around about the new Daniel Klaus book, Monica. Uh, I haven't looked around. I don't know what the opinion is on it. Uh, I know it's a big deal. I know everyone loves the new Dan Klaus book, but I'm going to jump in with my opinion and uh, interested to hear what everyone says. Because this is such a new book, I'm going to try and keep it spoilerly free, but I don't know how good I'm going to do at that, so maybe wait until you've read it. Um, the book is, I don't know, I, I'll, I'll try and keep my opinion till the end, All right, but to get a context for it, you get the end papers here basically start with the beginning of the world, the, cos the cosmic soup that life came from on Earth, then the, the Indicia page is basically like history. Uh, so you look like you're getting this story that's going to span all of human history, supposedly. And then it dives into just a very like kind of inner weird set of interconnected stories related to the titular character, Monica. Um, and in that, I think Klaus does a lot of good work, but there's this bigger story that I think he's trying to tell that under undermines the rest of the book, I guess is kind of my big thesis out the front. So the book's broken up into a bunch of different stories. I'll just show like one page from each story and give a summary of who the main characters are and how they interconnect and try and leave out any spoilerly details, anything too bad. And then I do I do want to talk about the ending of the book, but again, hopefully kind of spoiler free. So the first story here is called Foxhole. Uh, throughout the book, the the color of the paper is always changing. Um, I haven't taken a close look, enough look to see if it's actually different colored paper or if that color is being printed. My suspicion is that the color is being printed on there because there's this light yellow that Klaus uses that is oftentimes brighter than the color of the paper, and I can't imagine this bright of a color showing up on that paper. It's a really interesting trick because it makes the really light yellows glow, and I think Klaus uses that really well as an effect throughout the book, so I think it's a really interesting production. But this first chunk here, you're introduced to this character, Johnny, and they're in a war. It's kind of like, feels like Klaus is trying different genres of comics. I know he's done that before, but there's not as much stylistic variety throughout. So that that's an interesting thing. It's not like, uh, I think it was Wilson was the one, I haven't read that in a while, where he's like changing styles every page. Then you get a story that's more like beatnik hippie stuff, and you get introduced to Penny, who is Johnny's girlfriend, who's obviously cheating on him while he's away at war. You get to see Klaus stylistically play a little bit with like the yellow submarine vibes. And again, using these really intense yellows that I don't think would print that intense if you had a paper that was tinged this gray. So production throughout, obviously, it's a Klaus book by Fantagraphics. Production is top notch. The paper is super thick. Like while I was reading it, um, Tori was sitting behind me at her desk and just me flipping the pages and like the sound of that nice really heavy style it's got to be like at least a hundred pound paper or something like that um, she was like man that book's on really nice paper like she could just tell watching and as a fellow book lover was really really geeking out on that paper aspect of it so just a beautiful book to look at um, you know as as always with the Klaus production there are times throughout, I'm just going to not talk about this page, but uh, just go things where like in the art, it's just kind of weird, like why this word balloon is jumping out. I don't know. He could have just like scooted it over and made the tail of it smaller. I don't know if this is like, you know, it's fucking oppressive and it's trying to show, um, you, you know, like breaking out of the system or something. But this is basically... These, the story of the titular character's mother is who Penny is, and then this is Monica, the child. So each one of these stories relates to Monica's life somehow. At first, it doesn't really seem like it, but as you go through, you start to piece together the interrelationship of the different narratives, which is cool. I really like that story structure. I think in terms of writing, uh, there's a couple Klaus projects I haven't read in a long time. I would need to revisit, but... I think this is one of Klaus' more interesting projects. 
Uh, it seems like I, I saw an article saying it's his most personal as well. I don't know his autobiography, but it seems like maybe he's talking about his own past a little bit here. Um, I'm, I, again, I'm not sure. It just feels personal to someone who doesn't know who their father is, uh, had a strained relationship with their mother. All of that very down-to-earth, like personal struggles are really compelling in the book. Um, especially the narrative of someone, Monica, not knowing who her father is, which is the main thread throughout the book. But then it takes like all these weird kind of turns into like conspiracy theory and stuff that at certain times line up with the Monica character getting involved in these things while searching for her father. So that makes sense. But then there seems to be this larger narrative about this town, Inglewood, and this character, William, here, who goes back to his town after being somewhere, maybe in the war with Johnny. I wasn't quite sure how that fit. And there's, like, a town that's maybe been taken over by blue people. And there's, like, some witchy stuff going on. And uh, Inglewood is mentioned a couple other times in the story as something strange is going on in this town. Something happens to William that seems like it becomes relevant to Monica's story later on but all of this is like extra on top of this story of someone with a strained relationship with her mother and wanting to know who her father is and by the end of the book there's a very strange ending that i think is klaus like trying to tack on like he just doesn't trust himself to tell a straightforward story about people's life struggles and so he had to tack this other thing onto it um, here you see he's doing like a kind of Charles Burns thing. I have to say throughout this, like, I'm really downgrading my opinion of where Klaus actually stands. Uh, I know at the time that he came out, he was just offering something so different. But I'm trying to imagine like um, Charles Burns doing this same page and it would be a significantly better page. I think Klaus's real strength is as a colorist. Uh, he, as an actual cartoonist, I think his figures are pretty stiff. Um, he, he's not the best at composition. His compositions are always good. They're nice, but he seems happiest drawing faces and character and things like that. And this book is really reinforcing that for me. I think like Mike Allred, when I looked at uh, one of Klaus's other books, there was a page where I said, this is like a weak Mike Allred page. So I kind of think that, you know, like this is like Mike Allred would do this better. I also think, uh, and this is, you know, to the credit of the production of the book, if we got like some of the old EC stuff, like you got a Johnny Craig scanned from the original art, adjusted perfectly, colored by Jose Villarubia, and then printed on paper that is this nice with like the gray to get the original look, the desaturated colors. And we could see what those things really looked like. Um, you would see that Klaus is a pretty weak version of that. I think he's just getting the benefit of like all the modern production techniques. And so his art can reproduce clearly. But I just don't see anything on pages like this where I'm like, this guy is a god. I, I get that at the time that he came out, it was a bombshell. But retroactively looking back, um, I'm just not convinced as Klaus is the great master he is. I think if this book here came out now, like this was his debut book, everyone would see being a real promising debut, um, you know, and it would sell like maybe 1,500 copies or 2,000 copies. But the writing and the art and stuff just isn't, to me, up to par with what else is going on in comics these days. Again, I, I think of Klaus as someone who's too indebted to the history of comics and can't look forward. So he's a, he's a comic geek that took comics to art school. And this whole new wave of people who have been trained in the fine arts at first and are bringing art school to comics, I think are just, I think comics has moved past Klaus. It's really interesting because this is also, a lot of this is set in like the time period that he would have grown up on. I'm assuming like Monica seems to be about Klaus's age now. So he's gone from like the, you know, the hot young kid to the old man looking back. And he used to be really representative of, of his time. And now he feels really out of time, you know, like a book about someone who grew up in the 70s and had a hippie mom. Um, you know, the core story of 
wanting to find your father will always be compelling, but it just seems too, too out of time. Here you have this really strange, again, like unnecessary supernatural element where Monica is communicating with her father, her dead father, her dead grandfather through an old radio. So like this supernatural element. Uh, here you get some actually where I consider this this right here is just a bad drawing in general like he's over rendered and stuff um, So that's not something I'm used to seeing in Klaus's work The other thing I couldn't help thinking while reading this is this is like 101 pages long and it took him five years to do it um, I will finish my next hundred page book probably before the five-year mark I work a full-time job and an almost full-time secondary job. I have a partner who's disabled from COVID. Uh, I have a lot, of, you know, doing the YouTube channel. So I also think like, man, five years, if I had five years to do nothing but work on my books, um, it would be a longer book. It would be a better book. I wouldn't let drawings like this into the book. You know, I just... I'm I'm skeptical. Like it's a it's a decent book, um, uh, but I'm really not sold on it. This is a story called The Incident, and here you have the Johnny character again, who was in a relationship with Monica's mom Penny. He's getting involved now as a private detective, finding a guy and bringing him to this Inglewood town where something creepy is going on. This is where that technique of having uh, printed like faux color of the paper really lets this light yellow. This is where I'm saying to me Klaus's strength is as a colorist because here these rooms are just really really glowing as your perception of the intensity and the brightness of them is enhanced by the darker paper around it. I think that is really really nice and really really clever. But again a weird little side story that's setting up something more mysterious than really needs to be. Then this story here called success. This is about Monica becoming a very wealthy businesswoman. Um, she had been in a car wreck and is now having success as a businesswoman. And that that's kind of what that section's about. This is, I think, also allowing Klaus to talk about his own success in some extent. Uh, he's like here, the Monica is saying success has a strange effect on people. You think you'll just stay the same as before. Keep it real and all that, but no, you'll change in ways that are both hard to imagine and entirely predictable. You hear people say, I don't even care about success, I'm happy the way I am, but the truth is you do care, and no, you're not. And I, I think there is some admission of Klaus here, being the angsty, young, you know, fresh-faced guy that's against everyone, and now he's like the guy that enjoys fine wine, and he's he spent his whole life, everyone, you know, saying you're great, and he's been you know, eating fine food and going to comic conventions and is always the guest and things like that. And it's it's like, yeah, once you get that life, it's it's nice. And so there's, I don't know, it's still, I, I still just have a hard time with Klaus's general, the way his personality comes through in the work as well. Then the most compelling part of it to me, because it mixes the strange with the actual story of trying to get to know your father is this section called the opening the way this is where monica kind of gives everything up and goes and joins a cult uh, thinking that her father might be the leader of the cult so there you bring together all of the strange you know lynchian kind of x file stuff that klaus is trying to throw in here and the character getting caught up in that is because of her desire to know her father. So at that point, it all makes sense to me and holds together. And I'm like, okay, okay, this book is actually going somewhere interesting. And I, I think all of the writing and dialogue and stuff related to Monica trying to get to know uh, more about her mother, what her mother's motivations were and who her father was, that's all really, really well told. But just has this other stuff that's um, put on top of it. I think the best best drawings in this whole book are on this page here where Klaus actually kind of goes out of his standard style a little bit and adds a lot of textural rendering to it and he's putting more effort into the backgrounds and filling things out it's not so uh, just functional cartooning as normal there's actually some dynamics to it and, and again his power as a colorist is coming through here so that's really interesting. This is going back here. This this story is about Krug, who's another person 
uh, who, who her mother had been involved in, who may or may not be her father. And this is a guy who is an artist that's just disappeared and has been doing his own thing. So I think, again, Klaus is talking about himself a little bit here. The long days of immersion have rendered me unable to adjust downward from the receptivity to which I have become attuned. A mere walk in the park would become a psychosis-inducing kaleidoscope of grass blades and pigeon feathers, every element shrieking for individual attention, an intolerable barrage of filterless detail. Really love that bit of writing because that is... Uh, the that is a state that I've been in for sure especially as an artist you do get uh, consumed by details and you do uh, engage in pareidolia and pattern finding and all of this stuff and there is a temptation and I'm sure as a cartoonist you know we're all used to like being locked in the room there is a temptation to isolate and stay away from all of that so I really like that bit of writing then we get here Doomsday, this is Monica now older and kind of having made peace with uh, a lot of things in life. Uh, I, I really like some of the writing here because I think there's, again, clouds coming through a bit here. Uh, so Monica is now living somewhere and overseeing an Airbnb. Most of the occupiers are really nice, common genuses, including nature grannies, suburban water brats, and currently rich golf assholes. So that's the old Klaus I'm used to, where he's going around and uh, just judging everyone else, like he's he's the best guy in the world, and then he's just got names for like the long hairs, and uh, you know, just kind of critical of everyone else. But then in the next panel, it's like, at this point, I get along with everyone. Who am I to be judgmental? So that self-judgment that kind of picks up in the later half of 8-Ball, it's like he's still struggling with that tendency in himself, I think. And again, like I, I think one of the things with Klaus is, this art is about as good as, you know, this is like about what he was doing in 8-Ball. So he's maybe someone who suffered from his own success that he's been stuck in this lane. I just don't see much evolution past those later issues of 8-Ball. Like, he found his lane and he stuck in it. I think Wilson, again, with the, all the style playing stuff, was more experimental. But, I, you know, it, it's still kind of his tendencies that it seems like he's been fighting his whole life now of being judgmental, which I get in that way too, obviously. Um, but like categorizing people and making assumptions about them and in old age like trying to calm that down But I, I don't know. I think it's still in there And then here we have this character that she meets named Stan who to me looks like a drawing of Klaus as he is now So then I start wondering is this really a story about Klaus or maybe this is his wife or partner or girlfriend he had where you know, like he's like, like I'm me and Tori, I almost had Tori record a video with me on this, but I didn't really want to get into it. But, you know, she's been exploring her past and um, her relationship with her mother and her, her father and stuff like that. And it's a strange thing to be on that journey with someone. So I don't know if Klaus went through that journey with a partner or something, but it almost seems like an insertion of himself in there as well. So that's interesting. And then there's like this really nice emotional conclusion. Again, I, I don't want to give too many spoilers, or, but vaguely there's a nice conclusion to the emotional arc of Monica's story. And then like the last page or two just goes back for no good reason to this extra like X-Files David Lynch alien mystery. That one chunk in the middle with William that I couldn't figure out how it connected and then Monica does something, and given the uh, end papers here, which a beautiful illustration, again, Klaus's colors on, on point here. I think this is, again, him doing like a, you know, his drawing isn't quite up to par with Charles Burns, but his coloring really throws it over the top. And again, go back to like an EC artist and see their work reproduced from original art with this type of coloring. You'd see Klaus isn't as good as like a Johnny Craig or some of those guys. Um, but still an amazing image, beautiful image. But it's like this whole personal story somehow ties into the birth of the universe or the, at least the birth of life on Earth and the apocalypse. And there's just like, I don't see any reason for that. So 
I don't know. I'm really curious to see, you know, what other people think about this book. I'm, I didn't really have the time to go around and watch a lot of other reviews, but I'd be curious to hear from our audience. What are you hearing as the consensus on this book? What did you think about it? Um, my, my final opinion is that if you would have cut out all of this garbage and just told a down to earth character driven story about like the trauma of having a bad relationship with your parents and abandonment issues and all of that, it would have been, uh, you know, writing wise on par with the best work that's coming out today. But as it is, I think, like I said, if people hadn't have known Klaus's reputation, if this book had come out now, uh, the production alone would have pushed over to where people would have thought, this is an artist really worth paying attention to. If this book had been poorly reproduced, it would have been like, yeah, this is a compelling debut from a new artist, you know, who we should all be paying attention to. But I just, I don't see it being actually like competitive for best year, best book of the year or anything. If, people are actually looking at what's going on and not letting their assumptions about this is the new Dan Klaus project. He worked on it for five years. It's like, no, you worked on this for five years. And that's, you know, as far as I know, he he's high enough up in the, the kind of tiers of artists that he can be a full-time artist. Um, it's all right. It's an all right book, but I don't, I don't, I don't think this is the master work that Fanagraphics is trying to put it out there as so I got to say that I guess you know Klaus is higher up so we can punch up I try not to let out critical reviews but when it's a book like this you know you you, you kind of got to address it I think so mm, mm, I want to hear what y'all think Whole new world. Whole new world. Whole new world. Make sure to like, smash that subscribe button, and ring that bell.